Hi guys, my name's Andy Crowley and in this lesson we're looking at sus2 and sus4 chords where we've started to add numbers at the end of our chords, okay? Um, now these are pretty straightforward to play, these aren't going to be hard and we're going to be looking at the D sus2 and D sus4 first and then we're also going to apply the same logic and look at the A sus2 and sus4. So um, this is going to be about a 20 minute lesson but everything in it is going to be pretty straightforward you guys and pretty informative because sus2 chords are particularly great when you've got all the basic open chords mastered you know E, A, D, G, C for example sus2 chords can really add a bit of life to those chords a bit of a melodic tone and they, they add a bit of colour and embellishment um, let me show you what I mean so this is our standard D major chord remember we've got all the thinnest four strings ringing out for that to sound as good as possible now put simply a sus2 chord when we're looking at the D sus2 has your middle finger off and therefore we've only got two fingers down so that's a sus2 with two fingers down to make that connection and it sounds a little dreamy, sounds really nice and then we have our normal D of course and then if we put our fourth finger down on the thinnest E string at the same fret as the third finger we have a D sus4 so that's our fourth finger going down and it's a D sus4 as well that is just a coincidence it's not the reason they're called sus4s but it is the case and when we go between D sus2 and sus4 they sound really great together whenever you're playing any song and you're on a D chord for any length of time that allows you to go from one to another so anything over one bar two bars and definitely if you're on three or four bars because you can strum your D chord and add some color to it sounds really great and it's used in a lot of very common um, rock riffs um, Summer of 69 is probably the most famous and recognisable riff and there'll be a link to the songs that I mention in the tab below for you to look at the the uh, in the description below sorry to look at the tab and everything like that but I'm just giving a demonstration of the chords themselves really and I think the best one to start some of those were quite complex those demonstrations the best one to start with is actually with or without you by you two absolutely classic song and really beautiful the whole thing sort of builds up to a crescendo and then at the end of the song um, when after Bono stops singing there's this little section that goes like this and it does that in a loop so that's four strums or a whole bar of our D chord the D sus2 bad to a D and then the D sus4 now that is the perfect point of which you can get used to these sus2 chords, get used to what they sound like, get used to playing them and join into a really cool song without needing a capo or anything like that okay we can just get straight for this so that one more time we've got the D chord to sus2 D and sus4 and that's for the whole bar okay that's for the whole bar of each chord so as a demonstration two. Okay, if, you, if that's okay with you, I want you to join in with me. Okay, so I want you to join in with me now. So make sure you've got your guitar, you've had a practice of these chords, and we're going to go for exactly that. I'll keep it on, this, on the screen, the chord sequence, but still will hopefully allow you to see the chords and everything, what's going on. Um, let's go from the D chord in one, two, three, four. So it's just two. 
so two fingers down, back to the normal D, and sus4, D, sus2, D, and sus4, let's keep that going, one, two, three, sus2, D, sus4, one, two, three, and four, and let's finish on a normal D, uh, D chord. There we go, so pretty easy, but I want you to make sure that you do that along to with or without you toward the end of about three, three and a half minutes or so, and uh, that's your start on sus2 chords. Now, why do we have a sus2? What does this mean? Well, the sus, it means suspended, so it means we've got an extra note um, and it's an extra note that's within the notes of the chord. So I'm going to keep this pretty simple, but also give you the full reason, okay? So basically, we have three notes in any chord that we play that doesn't have a number at the end of it. So our D chord has three notes, starting from a D, which is also here as well. This is a D note, third fret on the open string. We'd consider that to be the first note of the D major scale. The next note in the D, is the F sharp, and that's the third note in the major scale. If you don't know this bit of theory, just humour me for a minute, just stay with me. Because in between those two notes, we have the second note of a major scale. So if I play the first three notes, one, two, three, then when we're playing a normal D chord, we're using one and three from the major scale. And then when we play a sus two, we're using the second note of that major scale, and that's why it's called a sus2. And you guessed it, when we're playing a sus4, we're adding the one, two, three, fourth note of the major scale. And rather than thinking of any notes that you learn in terms of learning a scale or learning your chords as just the letters, we can also refer to them as these numbers, and they become more uniform throughout all the different chords and scales because they have a similar sort of sound to them. When we have a sus4, it always has that sort of, ah, that bit of wonder to it, that bit of cheekiness to it, I guess. And a sus2 always sounds a bit more lonesome, but, um, but still very pretty. They're nice dreamy chords, the sus2 and sus4. And then our major chord is just a bog standard happy chord, okay? A very similar thing is happening when we look at the A chord and the A sus2 and the A sus4. So when we look at an A chord, I'm going to play it like this, but you can also play it three in a line as well. This is our A chord, doesn't matter which way you're playing it. Sus2, guess what? We're going to take the third finger off again. And as soon as we do that, we, could, we have that recognisable sus2 sound because the note we've taken off is relative to the root note, basically, to the one, as we'd call it. So this is our A sus2, really easy, you can play like this, as long as we've got those two down. I just think for myself and for learners, that is a more comfortable way to do it. And then we have our A sus4, where it's up to you whether, we'd probably put our little finger down, depending on how you, uh, how you play it. You can put your third finger down if you want to do it here. But either way, we want to play these two notes and have the third fret of the second string down. And play it like this, or possibly like this. And that is an A sus4, because we've added the one, two, three, fourth note of an A major scale to it. And you can just learn these as, remember the sound of them and um, learn how to play them. You don't need to know the theory behind it. You really want to know what the sound is. But I think it's important to tell you the reason why they're called a sus2 and sus4. It's a nice opportunity. So normal A chord, A sus2, and an A sus4. A great song with a cool riff to it using A sus2, sus4s um, is The Pretenders and Brass in Pocket. So we've, there we've got A chord to sus2, 
sus four to a, a to sus two, sus four, back to a. And as I say, the the links to tab for that song and the other songs I mentioned will be in the description to below on my website, andyguitar.co.uk. But it's the chords that you're wanting to get used to um, having under your fingers, because basically, whenever you now play an A chord and you're on it for any length of time, you can choose to add in a sus2 or a sus4 to taste. You can do it whenever you want. There's no right or wrong. There are mo ways of doing it and modes of doing it, but if I was to do say two bars of D and then two bars of A, so let's put it to just um, an eighth strumming pattern, downs and ups for example. So two bars of A and two bars of D, starting on the D. That sounds perfectly fine, but it would be spiced up and embellished and sound much more high level guitar with sus twos and sus fours. Now, when I change isn't really important in terms of when I change from a D to a D sus two. There's essentially no right or wrong for that. The one time you do need to stay regimented with it is for two bars of the D chord and then two bars of the A chord. You need to make sure you have changed within that two bars. So, for example, just to show you the possibilities of these. D sus twos and sus four chords. Okay, and you can see just from experimenting there a little bit myself, not being strict as to when I chose a D sus2 and sus4, it sounded really great. And of course, now that I've mentioned Summer of 69, it does sound very similar to that. And that's what I'm going to talk you through just a little bit for now. But for the exact way to play it, you're going to want to check out the links in the description, as I, as I say, to make sure you've got the tab in front of you. But I'll talk you through it as best we can and hopefully you can follow me okay so summer of 69 it sounds great with these sus2 chords um, we're just going to do the strumming first and we want to start off with our sus2 just a standard open chord and then we're going to change to a d and then the d sus4 and then back to the d so two d four d Two, three, four, and then at the end, sus two to D. That all together. Two D four D two D. And then we do exactly the same pattern, but on the A chord. So we start with an A sus2, 2, 2 A, 4 A, 2 A, or if you're playing it like this. It's that same pattern. And then we want to go from one to the other. And it's great to just strum each chord once as you're going through this to get used to the order of the chords first, like when you're learning any song. D sus2, D, D sus4, D, 2 then D, same on the A, A sus2, A chord, 
So it's four, A, two, A. And then we've got to get used to the rhythm of it. So if we keep that down and up strumming, it's every three strums that you change until you get to the last two. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then just on the beat. struggle to follow that you can just do it on down strums and literally just count one two three every time one two three one two three one two three one two three one two just at the end that's just two and sus and back to the normal d just two strums of that one um and there are plenty of other riffs that become very specific and recognizable and wouldn't be without these sus twos and sus fours a great one if i just play down and up strums on a d chord it sounds cool bit of guitar but it's not recognizable if i had a sus four it's suddenly creates a little thing called love by queen so, one and two and three and four, just by adding that fourth one. And uh, another great one with sus twos and sus fours um, has to be Other Side of the World by Katie Tunstall. So straight away, these basic open chord songs come to life and have recognisable riffs by using sus twos and sus fours primarily to create their riffs. So it's something that you want to start doing as well as learning as many of those songs as you choose to. You want to start putting it in your general plane. And if you have a chord sequence which goes two bars of G and then two bars of D and two, three, four, one. When you're on the D, you know you can now do D, sus2, sus4, and go back. And as I say, there's no real restriction of when you go, you're just using taste. And that taste is best learnt by learning those songs by uh, following this video and also the description below where we've got the tabs which are embedded on my website. Hopefully that lesson has helped you guys. This has been how to play sus2 and sus4 chords. Please subscribe here if you do like what I do and I'm sure I'll see you again. Bye for now.